It's time for The Perspective with your hosts, Pastor Mike Sherbino, who's always got a good old-fashioned joke or two, but most importantly, new perspectives on God's love that will lift you up. And Julie Stoutland, whose steadfast devotions and dedication will inspire you. On The Perspective, we welcome a host of thought leaders, healers, followers, seekers, all to hear God's voice as we ask, as the psalmist did, let the morning bring us word of your unfailing love. Hey, welcome to The Perspective today. I'm Mike Sherbino, and my co-host is Julie Stotland. Go figure. I got it right. <laughs> you got it right. Got it right. Yeah, after a year and a half, uh, we got it figured out. We're always learning about each other, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Absolutely. And I've discovered we both like water sports. Definitely. My idea of on the water is a ski boat, a big motor, the louder the better, the faster the better. But you kind of have a different approach, don't you? I'm the opposite. I enjoy being on a paddleboard. I call it my prayer closet on the water or my remote office. It's just nice, calm, quiet. I just do you actually take your phone with you? I do. I actually do work on the office. I mean, on the water. I yeah. I'll be doing research and. Okay, that's that's pushing it way too much. I do though. I'm not going to claim to be so pious. You know, (laughs) not me, not me. But I do love the analogy of the paddleboard because. You know, the ski boat, you can hear it coming. The paddle Mm -hmm. board is just kind of, you can sneak right up behind you, Mm -hmm. and it's still there. Mm -hmm. And there's an organization in Canada that is very quiet. A lot of people don't know that it's there, but it's making a huge difference. It really is. And it's navigating all sorts of rough waters Mm -hmm. here in Canada. It's called the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada. They were with us last week. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit more about their amazing work on parenting and why people are leaving churches and why some are coming back. Mm -hmm. But they're doing so much to press back against cultural issues that I think are destructive uh, for Canadians. And so I just applaud their efforts. Mm -hmm. It's been amazing. Mm-hmm. We have two guests today. We do. Yeah, yes. two creative two people. Two creative with people. With, yep. We have Joel Gordon. He's going to come on second. But first mm-hmm. of all, we have Alana Reimer. Yeah. And she's going to be uh, joining us right now. So, Alana, thank you for joining mm-hmm. us right from the nation's capital. We're glad you're mm-hmm. here. I'm so glad to be here. You guys have an office in Ottawa. What goes on there? Well, a lot of things. I mean, my my area is in communications, and so I. When you mentioned that the idea of the quiet um, background, <laughs> it resonated, I think, with the media work that we do, because I think a lot of what you see um, in media is obviously the the tough stories, right? It's the the, the hard and the sad and the difficult stories, mm-hmm. and that's the ones that grab the headlines. Um, and Faith Today is a little, it's a little different because we try to um, be more hopeful and. Um, those stories that uplift. And um, so I think it is kind of that quiet behind the scenes, but I do think it's a breath of fresh air. I know for me, when I when I pick up the magazine, it feels like a breath of fresh air because we need to hear those good stories too of what the church is doing. Definitely. Yeah. Elena, let's begin with, uh, with, uh, with you, with your Faith Today's tagline is Canada's Christian Conversation. In what u- unique ways does Faith Today contribute to discussions about faith in Canada? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the big things is that that uplifting and that hopeful um, approach that we have like it it definitely um, it it shapes the kind of stories that we choose to talk about and also how we talk about them right because I'm like I'm thinking of when we had um, the stories that I mean this is an ongoing problem of course but um, when there was that series of breaking news stories related to sex abuse scandals um, here in Canada and then also in the U.S. that the way that we approach that was talking about, you know, what can we learn from these fallen mm-hmm. leaders in the church? And then, you know, how can we support and come alongside victims of clergy sexual abuse? So it's that like positive sort of, how do we take this? How do we talk about these hard stories? We're not going to brush that under the rug, but also how do we have that redemptive focus that keeps um, keeps us, I guess, hopeful and keeps us realizing the place of the church in, in our context in Canada. Um, so it's kind of that local, perspective um, of churches and what they're doing, but also that bigger, broader societal issue um, focus. And you know, that excites me that you folks are doing that because you, in many ways, are a voice for Christians in Canada. And it's so important. Mm -hmm. We have a friend in the States who often comes on our program, Rachel Barbeau, and she also is an advocate, especially around that difficult subject, you know, of the sex scandals that are breaking uh, forth in the news when it comes out, whether it's 
in churches or with uh, sporting organizations, how we talk about it is so important. And I love what you said, Atlanta, that it's a redemptive conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, I have on my table, on table right here, a copy of the latest magazine. I'll put it up there, Faith <laughs> Today. And we Ooh. talked a little bit about it, parents, kids, and, and faith. We're gonna get into that a little bit more, but just so that people understand the publication, the main publication that comes out, what are some of the projects you're working on in Faith Today? What do you want Canadians to hear about? Yeah, we actually have a really exciting new project, which is a little different for us um, because the main our main vehicle tool is is the magazine and then also the podcast. Um, but we recently launched Faith Today TV, which is allowing us to bring to life um, in video format a lot of the stories that are in the magazine. Um, and so, as I mentioned, one of the one of the big sort of focuses with with Faith Today and then also with our publisher EFC is around that hopeful message of how do we. Um, keep track of and, and share those stories that often don't get told, especially if they're at the local level and they're smaller. Um, so we have a church in community segment, which is really geared towards inspiring churches and helping them learn from each other by hearing those, those stories that are just really about loving um, in loving their communities. It's not, you know, these strings attached messages and, and trying to um, have other agendas. It's just churches um, wanting to serve and care for people in their community. Um, so hopefully those stories are inspiring and they're encouraging um, and they they help churches be more creative, right? And thinking about how we re respond to the really complicated issues in our in our neighborhoods. And, and Faith Today also has a podcast. What can l listeners expect to hear if they check it out? Yeah, um, the podcast is is exciting because it kind of brings to life the voices, um, right, that are in the magazine and the, those the writers and the experts. Um, so it's a little, it, it draws from the magazine, but it's also um, deeper than that and, and broader than that. Um, a lot of it's Canadian focused, but we also are broader than that in in talking about um, issues that that affect our society and and just spiritual life and what does it look like to live that out here in Canada um so I'm thinking uh one of the the recent episodes was El Lopez who um is from Best Christian Workplaces Institute and so that was just talking about what does flourishing look like in the workplace so it's all kind of practical topics like that um and I think it's great it's worth checking out what do, what do you think are some of the 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 main topics that people really resonate with when you bring it up, you're like, oh, you get such a response in your podcast or in your magazine. That's a great question. I'm actually, I mean, not being one of the hosts, I, I don't get to hear all of that feedback. So I'm not hundred percent sure, but I do, I do know that um, the issues that are practical and um, you know, like things, mental health is such a big topic mm. right now. And so, and especially related to um, our pastors, right. And how, how they are cared for and, and their needs and seeing how the toll that that the pandemic had on pastors. So we've done a lot of um, stories related to that in all kinds of different um, areas. And so I think those ones are definitely needed and um, are, are a helpful uh, part of the conversation. You know, maybe it's more on a, on a personal level. I'm always intrigued how people uh, fall into where they're at. <laughs> and sometimes it's very intentional. Sometimes it's just happen chance. Yeah, you're an editor and uh, a writer as well. And we're going to talk in the next segment a little bit about what you're writing on in Love is Moving. We're going to get to that in a moment. But how did you wind up at the EFC? What's the story that God wove to bring you to the place where you're at today? Mm -hmm. I would not have expected to be here, actually, because a lot of my interest is is in how do we bring and translate Christian ideas to the broader um, culture. Um, but then I, I also have this kind of um, side, not side, but other passion, which is related to supporting um, Christians in developing their craft, which we'll, we'll get to more in, in when we talk about Love is Moving. Um, but when I saw that opportunity with, with Love is Moving, which is so focused on the next generation, I was just so excited about it. Um, and I think for me, seeing the bigger picture of, of the big C church is what keeps me in the small C church. <laughs> so I, um, I, I'm just so excited by the work that the EFC does in, in bringing that nuanced voice and um, the, the gracious tone that they have. So yeah, I'm very, it, it was unexpected, but I'm, I'm glad that this is where I, I landed. 
Well, I love how you say you keep your, your focus on the big C. It's, it's wonderful. We all need to, and, and that's what EFC helps us to do. But we're going to talk more about that right after this very short break. So stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Hey, turn that thing up. So um, last June, I, I created the initial prayer space with um, a buddy of mine from here at Eucharist and just opened the space for, for Sunday afternoons for people to, to wander in and to, and to pray on their own. Um, and that's sort of how it started. And it was such a meaningful initiative for the community that they decided to sort of carry it through into the fall. And it's had a bunch of different iterations as COVID's happened, but also as the church calendar has rolled throughout the, the year. It, there was always, it's always been in the sanctuary, um, which is a, a beautiful historic space with lovely stained glass and pews and whatnot. Um, so it's kind of beautiful on its own, but then we've, we've created different stations around the space that have different prayer prompts. Well, we welcome back Ilana Reimer and we add on Joel Gordon. Thank you for joining us today on the show. It's good to be here. So Ilana, I want to go back to you for a moment. What's Faith Today's sister publication, Love is Moving, all about? Yeah, um, Love is Moving deals with a lot of topics related to faith and culture and creativity. Um, so different than Faith Today, it is targeted towards young adults. Um, so most of our contributors are actually within that demographic, millennials, Gen Z. Um, and so we have an online magazine and a, and a print magazine, um, which publishes three times a year. Um, so we highlight a lot of personal narratives and stories of what it looks like to work through your faith in, in practical day-to-day -day ways and in community. Um, and one of the things I'm, I'm excited about is, is the regular columnists that we have who talk about all kinds of really tough and interesting topics related to sexuality and relationships and, and um, race and racism and theology and um, creativity and entertainment. Um, and so that's kind of one piece is our content. And then the other part is the ways that we try to come alongside and support those writers in community. So we have a Facebook group where we share job opportunities and different um, ways of supporting writers and their craft. And then we've also been doing um, online discussions live every few months where we talk about different topics related to creativity. So we have guests on and we talk about entrepreneurship and how you can support your creative work. And we talk about, um, yeah, just like uh, different um, ways of supporting, even like what it means to build a community and a, and a supportive network. Um, so I think that's kind of what makes us unique is that, that way of supporting wow. and caring for the next generation of storytellers. That's great. Well, that, that really is amazing. I mean, I'm just kind of saying, let's go back and repeat that again so I can follow it all through. But um, I want to take a moment right now and talk with Joel. And Joel, thank you for being with us as well, part of this whole creative team. And you're the director of partnerships. So why does the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada have an entire department dedicated to building partnerships with Christian ministries? I mean, I think I get it on one hand, but I want to hear it right from you. Sure. Yeah. First of all, thanks, uh, Mike, for having us on. It's great to be uh, we're here. We're glad. We're glad you're here. Well, you know, the EFC is really all about, and the EFC stands for the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada. And we're all about uniting evangelical Christians to bless Canada in the name of Jesus. And, you know, we work in a variety of different ways to see that blessing come forward. And the department that I lead, um, we're all about helping to facilitate partnerships wherever there's a need and an opportunity for us to speak into a gap or an area that needs attention for the church in Canada to address. We reach out to our, our partners, our affiliates, we call them. They're like members and there could be denominational leaders or ministry organizational leaders uh, or those who are involved in Christian higher education. And we form groups and come together and then respond to, uh, to various issues or, or practical needs of the church. And really a lot of that is driven by Jesus's prayer in John 17 for mm. us to really model 
oneness, for us to model unity. And so that's part of what we're trying to do in the partnership department at the EFC is to really model uh, what it looks like to be one church. Well, I like that because, you know, mm -hmm. I am a firm believer that we're better together. We need one another. And a lot of times uh, the church has been criticized, possibly rightly so, for being fragmented. So uh, kudos to you and the team for wanting to bring us back together to our common call. So I want you to talk to me. Describe one or two of these current partnerships that are, are really close to your heart right now. Sure. Well, you know, Mike, you just said something interesting. You said our common call. And I wasn't going to share about this initiative, but <clears throat> since you mentioned our common call, I might as well mention it. We have an initiative called Our Common Calling. We've partnered with three other national organizations, and we've sparked these, these conversations nationally around really, really difficult and, and hard-hitting issues. So it's a partnership between the, the Center for Christian Charities, the Canadian Center for Christian Charities, Lausanne, Canada, uh, the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada, and Christian Higher Education Canada. So that's one of them. It's called Our Common Calling. And it, again, another opportunity for us to embody that spirit of unity. That's cool. Well, yeah. Can I, can I, do I have time to share about two other quick yes, partnerships? Please yeah, do. we want to hear about yes. it. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> One that has really garnered a lot of excitement at the EFC, everyone that we've talked to has just been so excited to learn more, to partner in with us, is called Reconciliation Through Relationships. Mm. And it was, it was really sparked through a partnership that we have called the Seven Commitments Working Group. EFC has made seven commitments to move toward right relationships with Indigenous peoples and so we uh, ha yeah, have this working group called the Seven Commitments. And through that group, I was introduced to someone named Jimmy Thunder. And together, we launched this initiative called Reconciliation mm. Through Relationships. And what it does is it helps to spark biblical reconciliation, one friendship at a time. And what we do is we pair Indigenous Christians with non-Indigenous Christians together for the purpose of having transformative conversations and a friendship that can develop out of it. You know, so that's, it's so wonderful. And you put a face, you put a face to people and you, you, you build those relationships. It's so important. What a wonderful yes, cause. Exactly. And there's a website where you can learn more called uh, rightrelationship.ca. Um, so that's, that's one initiative that, is, is really exciting. And the other, I think have there's been already some conversation on your show about a research partnership called Parenting Faith. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Right. You got it. And yeah. I've got the, uh, the magazine right here. I've been telling yes. everybody about it. Uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, and tell us a little bit more because I just wish that every uh, person who claims to be a follower of Jesus would get a copy of this edition of the magazine. So helpful. You yep. tell me why, because otherwise I'll do it as well. <laughs> I just want to preach this stuff. It is good. It is a great magazine. And Parenting Faith, the research study, is the, the cover story. And you can order, have a free copy of Faith Today sent directly to your home. It's absolutely free. You can, just, you can find more information out at faithtoday.ca. But for the research report itself called Parenting Faith, which really helps Christians and parents mm -hmm. learn more about how to disciple their children in their homes. And we have a full report for that study that's available, and we've just printed a limited amount of mm -hmm. print copies, and we're making a few available uh, for free on your program. Awesome. And those can be ordered simply by calling one 866 302-3362. So that's 1-866-302-3362. And uh, we're glad to partner uh, with you um, and to be able to provide this as a free resource to your viewers. Well, you know, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I know it's, it's expensive. It's a $45 value. And I hope that people will take advantage mm -hmm. of that. And But come back 
Joel, and just tell me, or maybe Elana, you want to chime in on this as well. What is one or two of the findings that are so important in this research? Yeah, sure. I can share uh, just briefly. There's some really interesting things that this research has, has shown us, things that we may have been aware of before, but it really just brought it to the surface and highlighted it for us so that we can be more intentional about discipleship. Uh, one of the, the, the interesting findings from the research is that one of the key opportunities that parents have for discipleship with their children is often either at a mealtime with the family or in transit. Mm. So you wouldn't really think that while driving your car, while driving your car and driving your kids to hockey practice would be a time for discipleship. But those parents who are very intentional about discipleship are trying to find those everyday moments to make an impact for the gospel reaching and, and, and really penetrating the hearts and minds of their children. And mealtimes and drives in the car seem to be key moments. I know that's the way it was with us and our girls. Very key mo moments, everyday moments, but so important. Well, and I've read through the report and there's so much more that could be added. Elana, we're gonna give you the last word today though. What's something that stood out to you as uh, you're reflecting back that people okay, need to I hear would... about it? I was going to jump in. Um, yeah, something that really, so I actually uh, had the chance to to write the the cover story. And so I, I dove into the report. And one of the um, things that kept coming up, even with experts as I was talking to them, was that need for intergenerational relationships, mm. which I think we're seeing in, um, you know, like a lot of parts of our society, you know, from the way our schools are run to so many different activities are age segregated. And so that's in the church as well. Um, and, and, and that is, makes it difficult for those mentor relationships to form organically for different ways of support. And so I think that's something that a lot of parents will be thinking about. A lot of churches will be thinking about as they digest the research is how do we, how do we address those, those gaps and how do we better form those intergenerational relationships? Wow. That's wonderful. It's interesting you say that because I think about how I keep hearing about parent, grandparents need to look at their role as being very important. And I'm hearing that more and more. So that fits right into your study. Well, listen, guys, we're out of time, but this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for your work. I've always loved the EFC. It's such a pleasure to be with you and have you here and share this important work of EFC doing in Canada and beyond. Stay with us, everyone. We're going to be right back. a music artist from Lindsay, Ontario. She was first exposed to music through her mother, a gospel singer. When she was 15, she was scouted by Warner Music. Most people at my age when I started in music were still deciding what they wanted to do with their career and, and figuring out what they wanted to do after high school. And I knew from like even elementary school that I wanted to be a singer. So how are you doing with your anger problem? Say, so, I don't have a problem. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Well, we need to consciously think about how anger infiltrates into our life and how it comes out in the various ways that we express ourselves. It is very subtle. All this week, we're talking about this road trip of a lifetime, and I've used the analogy of a backseat driver. You know, the backseat driver that's always chirping and chiming in with their negative comments or how you could drive better. We know how irritating that is. Well, James uses the analogy of that with our emotions. He says, my beloved brothers, and it's a nice way to start because he is letting them know that he's not here to knock them down, but to build them up. But he says, here's the issue. Every person needs to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. We say, yes, that is so true. But why is it sometimes that we just explode? In tomorrow's talk, we're gonna look at the different kinds of anger. But for a moment, I want you just to think about how anger starts out in our life and sometimes how we feed it. And if it goes unchecked, how it can be so destructive. We said yesterday, the measure of greatness is in whether you handle anger or if anger handles you. 
Have you ever noticed you're at the food store and there's a two-year-old or a three or four-year-old and they throw a tantrum and uh, they don't get something right away. They scream. There can be instant tears and they start to hit. And presto, that kid has the attention of everybody around them. And then we're all thinking, why doesn't the parent do something? Why don't they take some active control? Well, that's a whole other subject on effective parenting. And a little bit in the EFC magazine will help us to unpack that, but we'll leave that for now. So there's the toddler, and then there's the teenager. A lot of times when they're angry, they sulk. They try the quiet routine. And when getting angry, uh, some people actually think, and as a teenager, I, I didn't do this, but others have, you know, I'm not going to eat anymore. I'm just tired of this place. That usually passes with the first whiff of pizza when it goes by. But, you know, we're going to sulk. We're going to get our own way. And that behavior goes unchecked. Come back to what James is saying. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. What does it mean? Well, let's talk about me as a husband. Let's talk about you guys that are listening right now. Sometimes it's easy to get mad because we come home and we think everyone should appreciate us. After all, we've been hard at work. Nobody else has been. We feel exhausted. We want people to wait on us, and it's so easy to explode. And the dog doesn't even wag his tail when we come in the door. Time to trade in the dog. At least we think that. And we mutter to ourselves, and when our wife would say to us, what's wrong? We say, oh, nothing. You wouldn't understand it. And then, ladies, do you ever get angry? Okay, maybe it's because you're thinking, what is wrong with my husband? He doesn't know how to communicate. He doesn't understand what I'm feeling. He doesn't know what I've gone through all day. Maybe you've been working at a job. You come home and you're trying to handle the children. And as one lady said to me recently, I've got a very busy job. I miss being the, the mother figure all the time. And you're trying to scramble and hold it all together. More often than not, when I talk to young moms who are working at different jobs, there is a whole level of exhaustion. And exhaustion can lead to anger, and we can just blow up. Why do we get angry? Well, I think a lot of times it's because we've not learned what it means to rest and say, God, you need to carry this problem for me. And you know what? He is saying, I've been waiting for you to ask. The Bible says, you have not because you've asked not. And in the midst of our relationships, we have a Heavenly Father that wants to walk with us and he wants us to experience his grace and his peace. James says, my beloved brothers, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. When I'm tired, when I'm exhausted, when I'm frustrated, I don't want to listen. I just want to set everybody straight. So as long as they're thinking my way, then everything's going to be cool. But that's not God's way. That's not the way that he calls us to live in harmony. You might be in an explosive situation today. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about three types of anger and how it can just be so destructive. But for today, put out that lit fuse and by the grace of God, say, God, I want to experience your love, your grace in my life so that I can be the man, the woman, the person that you have called me to be. What a way to go. What a way to travel. 